Here we go. Where are we going? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I am here with my friend, Chris, who is an amazing wise woman. She lives up in the mountains of Colorado on this beautiful property, just immersed in nature and just really owning who she is. Um, and I love being in her energy. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love being yeah. in yours. It's and, a mutual uh, reception. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we're going to learn a lot about astrology tonight and also how she has come to be an astrologer, work with astrology, understand it. And, and um, I'm just so curious, how does one get here? Um, yeah. It's an amazing path. It's a beautiful path. I, for me, it's um, has always felt like, whoa, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> but like anything, you just have to work with it over time and, and grow in expertise and understanding. Yeah. So, and what kind of crystal are you wearing right now, by the way? This is like a Tibetan quartz stone. Oh my goodness. Know. And these are all Tibetan quartzes too at the top? These are, yeah, I think these are too. I can't remember. Oh, Christy Borden, my favorite. She's Meta Juju out of Portland. Oh, they're Meta gorgeous. Juju. She makes Meta just, Juju. Yeah, like, Is that her yeah. Instagram page? Yep. M E T A J U J U. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking. She's incredible, and she like the way she takes care of her stones and the whole process that she goes through is really special. Oh. So yeah. I oh, know. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Looking up her yeah. Etsy shop. Later. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can see in the background, she's, she's also a sound healer. So she does mm -hmm. gongs and um, tuning forks and yeah. um, body work too, or just, or the sound healing primarily? Just that. Yeah. Just the sound healing. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's actually how I got started. So you were wondering how I got started. Okay. Well, let's hear the rest yeah. of the story. The sound came in first. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> it was like some yeah. kind of iron. Yeah. Right. So, um, <laughs> something with that. So, yeah, it was really um, that, you know, a friend of mine here in Steamboat, um, there was a woman who was coming up from Boulder and teaching, and a friend of mine said, You should take the classes. And I said, Why would I do that? I'm like an event planner and I run events and, you know, I organize things. And she's like, no, no, you should just take them. And I was like, mm, you know, so she, it took her a little bit to get, convince me. And then I was like, all right, I'll go do one. Yeah. And I remember the first day I walked out of the class and I was just like, I came home to Tim, my husband. And I said, I said, that's it. I'm now a sound healer. He's like, I'm sorry, what? Like it was like Friday morning, Friday night, you know, like 180. And that was it. Like it was a big, yeah, it was a big shift. And I've been going through it, you know, like I had, right around 41, I'm 50 now. So I was just thinking about this recently, about nine, 10 years ago, I went through like a pretty big depressive state of like, what am I doing with my life? My kids were at an age where they were like needing me less and I just was feeling lost. And so I tried antidepressants for five days and I realized that wasn't gonna work. Mm -hmm. So I started down this journey of like doing yoga and then there was a life coach that was teaching yoga. Mm -hmm. And I kind of danced around for about six months debating whether to work with her. And mm -hmm. so I guess that was first. I started working with her and then she introduced me to this woman who convinced me to do the sound healing. And the interesting thing about the sound healing and why that was the big segue is all my tuning forks and gongs are all related to planets. So there was a whole astrological component to it right out of the gate. So learning the sound was important but we did it all in relation to the planets and people's individual charts and right. so that was how it all really began and so i've been to a gong bath before <laughs> and i hated it but you've also played the gongs for me and i loved it mm -hmm. i think there is there's got to be a difference between just banging the gongs and <laughs> playing them in a certain way right <laughs> yeah you know it's interesting you say that because i've heard that same thing from different mm -hmm. people and some people really like to have the gongs hit really hard because they're like because what the what the sound does is it shifts up the cells in our body right vibration helps the cells move and get more in alignment with our system with what's going on in the planets up there kind of what's just what's happening in present time and so some people need like to have the gongs wailed on in order for them to actually feel feel anything okay um, but for the most part my clients i play them softer gentler mm -hmm. I, I, I say what I, I like to roll them so i kind of get them warmed up 
and I roll them so that they really just resonate and I feel like they're like waving through people's bodies versus like slamming into people. I don't like that either. I don't, I hate like, it's jarring for me, yeah. Yeah. you know, for sensitives, you know, like us, you know, it's, it's, it's too much. So I think, um, and then what I also do when I do my gong sessions is I pay attention to like what's going on in the skies, you know, as mm-hmm. we'll talk about later, there's, you know, we're in the, the month of Taurus. So I would play a lot of Venus. Venus is related to Taurus. So it's just really paying attention to what's going mm-hmm. on so that it's resonating on the frequency of the planet. And then we can resonate it within people's bodies. That's so cool. So is Venus like a supportive energy to Taurus? Yes, she rules Taurus. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, yeah, so, so it's, it's just interesting to just, yeah, so that's the segue. Mm-hmm. Ah, very cool. Okay. And so when people come to see you, they'll lie on the massage table, like with blankets and, and you'll play and they'll release all kinds of stuff and Mm -hmm. it's sort of like a yin yoga thing right like we really get them comfortable so either i'll have like a group of people come and we'll do something or um you know on individual level usually i do um forks you know i'll do the fork session first where the forks actually touch their bodies Mm -hmm. and the thing about the forks is we have different um sizes that go with different layers of the body so you know Mm -hmm. we have certain forks that go really deep and then the gongs are more etheric so it's more on like the energetic level of our body whereas i've got other forks that go really deep into the system to really to really help move things but again on a gentle level so yeah Mm -hmm. so that's that's an individual session of um, how i would do things but then mostly what i do at this point i would say is you know have group groups up here yeah. And they're all laid the yoga mats all over the floor with blankets and pillows and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it takes to kind of get people comfortable so they can just really relax into it. So how do you know when people need a tuning, like tuning forks to get really deep into the body or, or people are, what they need clearing is more out in the energy bodies? Well, I would say that when they come to me, they've already committed to working on an individual level. You know, so it's, so it's really at that point, we're working within all layers. Okay. And, you know, yeah, so it's really more, um, and it tends to be when they're just name it or not name it, you know, and it's just basically they're out of vibrational alignment. And so I look at their chart and I see kind of, you know, what's going on with the planets. I see, you know, their natal chart, which is the day you were born. And then I see what's going on in the transiting planets, which is where the planets are today. Mm-hmm. And then I try to attune their bodies to match with what's going on now. So it's almost like bringing them, like I said, into present time. Hmm, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really fun. And it's, it's a pretty small part of my business at this point. But when I started, that was all I did. Yeah. But then what I realized is people really wanted to know more. They wanted to talk about it. They wanted to know more about their chart. They wanted to understand themselves on a mental level. So yeah. once people lay down, I kind of am like, I'll talk to them for a few minutes. And then I'm like, bye-bye. You know, this yeah. is your time to just go zone out. And yeah. then, you know, so then it became like, okay, well, can you tell me more about myself? And so that's how I went into the next phases of my business was then I went to coaching school and did a year getting um, a certification in coaching and then I found the astrology uh, school that I wanted to follow and that I wanted to work with. And that was mm-hmm. probably 2014 or 15, 15 mm-hmm. um, was that. And so, yeah, then I um, started in that school and I went all the way through that school and I began teaching it as soon as I was done. So it was really my goal was to be able to work with people on a quiet level, mm-hmm. just on their bodies, and then to also work with them on the mental level, to be able to really have them integrate those two parts of themselves so that they could interrupt a thought pattern of, oh, this is just my, you know, what part of me talking. And then also on a um, energetic level and emotional level where it's just like, just let me work on you and let's just, you know, clean up that. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Right. So, yeah. So that was my goal. Uh, Physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. I wanted to be able to work on all levels. So, yeah. So it's been super fun. I would say most of what I'm doing now, though, is coaching in astrology and teaching. I teach astrology as well. So through that school that I went through. So what is the curriculum like there? So it's beautiful. Um, the, the school is called Deborah Silverman Astrology. Mm-hmm. And we've run thousands of people through the school online. Um, so there's two components that are online, two levels that are online. I just finished my second level today actually teaching 
Um, and so I have students from all the world. I had one from South Africa. I had one a couple from Canada, you know, one from Belgium, you know, I've had them from all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very simple. The whole point is, is that we break down the chart and teach them like simple chunks every week. Mm. So, and then just let them kind of marinate in that part of learning about themselves. So there's two components to it. One is the most important part is really learning more about themselves and owning and really acknowledging big parts of themselves. It's the most beautiful thing. I had a 77 year old woman in my class this time. And she was in tears and sent me the most beautiful emails after every single class because she was learned something about herself that she didn't, that she hadn't acknowledged for 77 mm -hmm. years <laughs> and that she felt really good. And she's like, I got a lot of long genes in my life, Chris, my grandmothers and my mom have all lived to be almost a hundred. So yeah. I got a lot of years left to go really accept this part of myself and really own it. Like just so lovely. So um, and then the other pieces, the other part is, is that some people become astrologers, like they really want to take this out into whether they're yoga instructors or coaches or counselors or, you know, whatever, and just take that out into the, their world and um, have it be a part of their program. So, so is that more like a level two where people will learn how to yeah. read others? charts of others after they understand themselves pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's level two. And then even we have a level three, which is um, either an on-site and now this year, based on what's going on, we're actually doing an online mm -hmm. retreat level three. Um, for the first time this summer, we're doing four sessions of that. And I'm actually going to get to teach at one of those. Um, I've been assisting those for years and now I'm going to get to teach at one of those. So, or at all four of them actually. So Ooh. it's really, and that's really when at the end of that level three is when we're really like, okay, go out, do readings, practice, go see people, you, you know, you, we've given you everything you have, and then we support them as they continue on, but they're really ready to give readings and yeah, get what out there. What do you learn in level three? It's the beautiful piece is we actually make you, you do a reading with one of us. So we're okay. actually with you in the room, um, on site or online. And, um, and then there's just the deepening. And the biggest part is, is they get to work with what we call the master, which is Deborah herself. She's been an astrologer for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. So she's, she actually runs the level three and um, she's, yeah. So she shares all her wisdom. And mm -hmm. so it's just, it's almost, it's the culmination mm -hmm. of really tying it all together. So it's really beautiful. What are some of the, um, the struggle, <laughs> the struggles you encounter when you're working with people at first, um, when they're like kind of fixated on like, I'm a Scorpio and you know, you have to, <laughs> yeah. What are some of the tricky parts with that? Um, I think, um, I think one of the things I don't I don't know if it's tricky so much as what I'd love to do now is I give the high and the low as I call it at your best, you're this way at your worst, you're this way. And so it's, it's really just a great way for people to really, because everybody on, you know, no matter your Gemini, Scorpio, whatever you are, there's a piece of you that you're like, I love this part of me. And there's a piece of you that you're like, oh, I don't really love this part of me. Yeah. And so I, you know, once I can really share that with people, like at your best, you're really deep and you really are able to listen. You're a great listener. And at your worst, you can kind of get like a little bit prickly and you can, you know, maybe get a little bit manipulative or something like that. Like, you know, so, and they're like, and usually I have people laughing. They're like, oh my God, you're so right. So I think that's a really great icebreaker because I'm not like, I'm not labeling them because I don't know how they're showing up. Right. You know, and to be honest, we're showing, we show up in both parts of it all the time, you yeah. know? So yeah, not have all the ever, time. But. Have you ever had anyone who is like, this is completely, like doesn't resonate at all? Like, yes. I'm not this kind of person or whatever. <laughs> what I else? have. Um, and the, the two time, the only time that happens is um, you have the wrong birth time oh. when I've had the wrong birth time. Gotcha. So like, for instance, if you, if I get PM and AM mixed up, that's a totally different chart. A lot different. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's really the only time I only had one client in my five years of doing readings where she was really like, nope, nope, nope. And she had a lot of Aquarian energy. And so that's not surprising because they really don't like to be told who they are. Or yeah, what they want or what they do, you know. So <laughs> she was really, yeah, she was having a toughie with that one. So, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, no, most people are giggling pretty quickly, you know. I like to really just, I really like to bring lightness to my readings of like, like we all have silly human traits, and, you know, and we all like, we all make mistakes. We all do really cool stuff and then we all, you know, make mistakes and have some really silly things. So it's like to bring humor to 
situations is one of my one of my ways of being like okay so if we can laugh at it a little bit then maybe we can start to shift the parts of us that we don't really like very cool makes me want, <laughs> want to ask a question but <clears throat> um if if this is too challenging to answer you know on the fly um <clears throat> i'm curious if you've noticed the different signs having different responses or i guess different sun signs since it's the easiest mm -hmm. one people know about having different responses to the to the um coronavirus to the pandemic mm. sure. I, I'm, I'm just curious what you've noticed yeah yeah i think the um we, you know, we break a lot of astrology down to the elements, right? Mm -hmm. That's the simplest way to do it. So water people, so Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio suns, they're like in heaven. They're like, <laughs> I get to stay home. <laughs> I don't have to see people. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> right, Mrs. Water Person? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, you know, so in that, so that simple. Earth people, you know, which would be Taurus and Virgo and, and Capricorn, they're doing okay with it too because they have mixed, you know, as long as they can get stuff done. Like Earth yep. people have to get stuff done. Um, so they're doing okay with it. Air people who like to be with people, like this Zoom thing was fun for a while. Now they're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm over it. Like, <laughs> if I don't get to go out and like see somebody at a restaurant soon, I'm going to go crazy. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Okay. <laughs> um, and then fire people as long as they can move their body. They're okay, but if they don't, if you try to keep a fire person inside and not let them like lift weights and like jump all around and move, they're yeah, they're they're gonna get depressed. Uh. So yeah, fire, fire and air are more external, and water and earth are more internal. Okay. So it's working. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's an easy answer <laughs> to that. <laughs> Which makes me think of what happens if a fire person and a water person are married? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful balance of energies. <laughs> yeah. Someday. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, to learn from each other, you know, a fire person is teaching the water person how to be more extroverted and how to be able to, you know, get more fun in their life. And the water person is teaching the fire person how to be still. Yeah. Lesson and then lessons. there's me and Noah who are both water, although he's got more fire than I do. He and does. we just, yeah. we can get very stagnant. <laughs> exactly. Right. So that's, that's the piece is like, yeah, it's a little, it's funny, you know, we, what we attract and all that. So yeah, just to realize that about ourselves. So it's almost like you need that third party of like, where's our fire? Who's going to get us out of here or whatever. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any other funny um, observations that you've, like, even in your own family? Of how people oh, yeah. Are? It was a lifesaver for my family. Absolutely. Really? As a parent, yeah. it really was the greatest thing that ever happened because my son, who's all fire, yeah. um, he, I spent the first, before I started astrology, so probably the first 11, 12 years of his life telling him to, shh, could you just be quiet? Stop talking so loudly. Stop walking so loudly. Stop yelling so loudly. And as soon as I learned his chart, I went, uh-oh, oops, that's his job. Yeah. He's a fire starter. I mean, fire people are fire starters. And everyone in the world is always telling fire to sit down and be quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's not really their job. So then they end up doing that, but then they put their fire out, which means they're not really being the courageous, confident, um, blunt, and bold the people that we need that they are the change they're the change makers of society yeah. so you know we need them to be loud but it can be really <laughs> it can be a lot so yeah. yeah so sometimes it's just that i have to go outside the house so that he can be loud and you know do his thing and do whatever he needs to do yeah, yeah. that's so cool just, yeah and he's an aries he has three planets in aries so he mm -hmm. his independence of i can do it myself from the earliest ages i can do it myself like that was like his first line out of his mouth before he said Mom. <laughs> <laughs> i do it i do it um, okay you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know and so you know just to know those things about them it's just like okay like to really foster that independence mm. you know i wish i had known it when they were a little younger but we're catching up and to be an acceptance of it yeah. yeah, I should have my yeah. kids' charts done. I should yeah. have you do that because I, I kind of know um, me as a Taurus. <clears throat> yeah. Which I think there's lots more other things, obviously. Right. And Jakey's September 7th, which is a Virgo. Earth and Earth. Virgo. I know almost nothing about Virgo, like mm -hmm. nearly nothing. 
I have no <laughs> idea. What, I don't even know if it's air or water or whatever. I no. It's earth. It's mm-hmm. earth. Oh, he's yeah. an earth too. Oh, yeah, interesting. So both earth kids. Yep. Earth kids. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's neat. <laughs> Definitely there's, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot more, but I, but Mia is um, very fiery. Mm. Like she's got a lot of passion. She, her first, like kind of her go-to emotion is anger <laughs> mm-hmm. and frustration. So that would be our moon sign, right? So the sun sign represents our personality. It's the thing we can uh, see. I'm okay. a Gemini. I love to talk. You okay. know? So that's the first thing we can see or we can see about a person. And so Taurus, she likes to go slow, but her moon sign is her emotional uh, body. So okay. that's a whole nother thing. So you're right. There are a whole lot of other things besides our sun sign. Okay. So that's why a lot of people don't resonate with their sun signs. They're like, I'm not really sure I really resonate with being this because maybe they have a whole lot of planets in another sign, which would overrule right. their sun sign. Okay. Yeah. People don't be just reading the Sunday paper and right. that's everything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <Right? clears throat> yeah. 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 Cause I would, I would say, I don't know that I resonate so much with the sun sign, but with the moon, I think my moon is in cancer and that makes mm. more sense to me. For whatever yep. reason. Yep, Mama Bear, mm-hmm. you and me. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, when in doubt, people should get a natal chart reading and then look at all the other things <clears throat> that are contributing rather than just go by. I, th- I think that's something I notice with people. They read their horoscope, they think, think it's garbage um, <laughs> because it's so generic, and then they just brush it off as not a thing that, that is worth studying. Right. But that's not been my experience. My experience has been like through talking to you and other research I've done that there's so much, it's actually too much for me to know. <laughs> yeah. You that's know? The interesting. It's, it's a rabbit hole. It's large and wide for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole goal of how I teach it and how I read and how I was trained was how to keep it simple. The whole oh. goal of everything I do with a reading is to make it practical. So at nice. the end of my reading, of a reading with me in an hour, the person walks away with a practical step. They walk away with some good knowledge of who they are. They walk away with a recording so they can listen to it again because it is a lot of information. But I ask a lot of questions like, how does this show up for you? How do we fine tune this piece? What's your missing element? You know, what's, you know, so they walk away with something to go do so Uh, that they can try to work with the energy of what's going on. Can you say more about the missing element? What do you mean by that? Great question. It's, um, so we're all made up, you know, going back to that, water, air, earth, and fire, Mm -hmm. we are all made up of all four components and some are stronger than others. You know, so I have a lot of fire and air, so I'm very outgoing. I can be very loud. I can be like the whole family. Anyway, (laughs) um, you know, so it's, it's, and then I'm also, I have a lot of earth in my chart, so I'm very grounded. I'm very practical. Um, So it's a lot of, um, but water was my missing elements. When you have a missing element, it's kind of like four wheels on a car. So if only three are pumped up and the fourth one is flat, we can't move. Ah. So our goal is to try to even things out and to raise that, you know, to cultivate that missing element to be able to make us more uh, well-rounded, I guess is the way, the way to operate through the day. Do you notice when people have a missing element that it, in, that it influences what they eat? Um, I don't know if it's the missing it, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know if it would be the missing element. I would say, because it could also be the predominant element, right? Okay. So like, um, for instance, my daughter's very watery, right? Yeah. So she, she's a cancer. So she goes to food yeah. for her, for her um, emotional you know, body to help with her emotional body. So it has to do, it can, it can be either an abundance of an element or a missing yeah. element. You know, I tend to see that missing elements were avoiding. Gotcha. So like, you know, um, yeah, it could be, it could be more of that. I always say with Gemini, I could eat air. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was curious about because, um, like Chinese medicine and Ayurveda are, they talk about these elements too. And, and something right. I often want to eat is crackers and chips, <laughs> mm. not so much chips, but mostly crackers for some reason. Yeah. Um, especially after I've been sitting for a long time. Interesting. And so I always kind of figured, um, you know, maybe I haven't gotten enough air in my day or too much air or, right. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know and that may be your missing element actually, cause you've got so yeah. much water, yeah. you know, so I can't remember your chart 
totally. I should have looked at it before I came, but yeah. I don't yeah. know how you would possibly remember my chart. I do from actually like, remember it. Do you? <laughs> from the like thousands of Scorpio. You One of you has it. Yeah, because you both have that. So yeah, I'm trying. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yours is all in the bottom part of the chart too. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see yeah. it. That's my, but that's my memory. I have this memory that like can visualize charts and yeah. Well, that's helpful. Crazy. It is helpful. Yeah. Keeps me awake at night, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what was that <laughs> right. what house was that planted in again oh my god it never Do you stops. teach all of that too like the the different houses and and mm -hmm. like your your moon is in the 12th house and all of that yep yeah wow. yeah so it's we do a lot we condense a lot into 12 weeks yep. and then it's kind of like marinated it like as i left my group today i'm like okay you guys keep staying in touch with each other keep looking at charts together like that's the only way to do it. And we make them go do a reading. We actually get them a practice client and we make them go read somebody so they could actually apply it. It's called applied mm -hmm. astrology. So we, cause there's so many people out there who learn stuff about astrology, but yeah. they never find a practical way to put it all together, tie it with a bow and explain it to somebody else. Like we can explain parts of it, but like the whole picture of like who you are, that's mm -hmm. been something that um, this school has been really good at being able to put together for, for people to be able to read other people. So yeah. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it it gets because there's so much there, and you you can just buy like a ton of books and try to understand it. Um, I think Noah Noah like after he met with you once, he he like bought a bunch of books and was reading them, and and then like after a few weeks, he's like, I don't know, and <laughs> just put them away. <laughs> If I can tell you how many people come to our school doing that, they're like, I have studied astrology for 20 years I, and I can't like, I just can't put it all together. Yeah. You know, like I, I just like, I've gone down the rabbit hole of like this whole section, but now I don't know what to do with that information. So that's the whole practicality of what, the way I like to teach, the way I like to read people is like, let's keep this practical, you know? And when I do my readings, yeah. I'm not using a lot of astrological jargon. I'm not like your Venus is in here and your Mars is in here. I'm, I'm like making it, I'm saying it to them in English. Okay. Like, well, the way you partner is this way and the way you, you know, you work out is this way. So they don't even know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter because I know what I'm sharing with them, right. you know? So it's just keeping it really practical and simple so that when they listen to the reading again, they're not like, my Venus what? is semi squadrate, <laughs> my Jupiter in the seventh house with, you know, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, even, even with the, I don't know, several weeks of research that Noah did, did he knows like 300% more than I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he somehow go. figured it all out, but or a lot out, not everything. Like you can't read a whole chart. Um, right. But we, he right. made, he made me buy this, some kind of natal chart software for my iPad where it kind of like lines us up and uh -huh. it's fun. It's fun. It's good. But, but I, I definitely had the sense of like, I would like to go to an expert if I want to learn more about this. I, love I know it. someone right. for this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yep. Yeah. And that's that synastry you're talking about. So it's like putting your chart and his chart together mm. and then it's, called, it's a synastry chart reading. So it's like, you know, seeing how those two come together and like, um, where you bump and where you are really strong as a couple. Just about the only thing I took away from that was that he is more gifted um, uh, naturally at money, mm. at managing money and dealing with money. So I, it was a, a huge shift for me to just say, okay, this is your job and I will not worry yeah. about it anymore. Right. But think how, how much, how important that is. That's like one of the top three for breakups, yeah. right? So, I mean, yeah. to know that you're just like, oh, right. I never really liked it anyway. So thanks, you know? <laughs> I didn't, I don't. <laughs> right. Right. And he so doesn't so mind. Relieving. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But there's something about us that like when we're in a couple sometimes feels like we should, right. You know, or we like have to be involved when you just are like you could glaze over and you just couldn't care less, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. And as long as you trust him, then it's all good. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's something about, you know, as souls, I think we are, we all want to um, learn how to individuate and mm -hmm. learn how to, to, to be balanced within ourselves and take care of ourselves and, and do things for ourselves, especially if we mm -hmm. grew up enmeshed or um, just feeling disempowered. 
Yeah. Um, but eventually at some point, I think it's nice if you're in a really healthy um, relationship to just recognize, oh, Noah's really great at money stuff. Here you go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's for you. Right. I trust you. Take care of it. And, right. you know, I'm just better at rem- doing the grocery shopping and other things. Right. Yeah. Taking care of the millions of things that have to get done. Yeah. yeah. And remembering yeah. things. I'm, I'm actually right. really good at remembering things. Um, right. And that's not his favorite mental task. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing when we just own that about ourselves. I love that you just said that because that's actually you had, you had emailed me like, how did you even get here? And I think the part that I skipped, I told you the logistical way of how I got there. Yeah. But the piece is, is that it's really about like we teach what we heal. Mm-hmm. And so finding my power, which was really a big word and it still is to this day and feeling empowered and being able to really work through like this challenge or this challenge. And what just happened actually is I, um, when I was about 41, when I was going through that period where I was like playing with depression and not doing very well, um, I went and read back like my 15 years worth of journals. And all I saw oh. was the repetitive problem like repeat, repeat, repeat year after year. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to get help. Yeah. And so that's how I really went down that whole path and really began this personal growth journey. And now I'm like a total junkie, like personal growth. Like, <laughs> give me something. <laughs> like can't, can't get enough. Every morning I'm like, oh, who am I going to read today? You know, um, yeah. but that was really great. And then because of a certain astrological aspect happening for me in my chart, I actually just last week in the new moon in Taurus burned 22 years worth of journals. Did you? Like that pattern, then we're done with that story, right? That's incredible. Mm. mm -hmm. So, but it was really like, so my goal, I guess, if who are my, who's my typical client are people who are, are growth, you know, into personal growth that are like, there's something I can feel the shift. I can't quite name it. And then I just help them name it. Like, this is what I see, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like these that are really trying to really step either a big leap or a small step into just feeling more empowered in their life. Like what you were just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I have that too, where my focus is on people who are, uh, don't want to be victims. They want to be (laughs) in their power (laughs) and maybe they show up at first feeling like a victim, but Mm -hmm. that's okay. We heal out of that. We understand that we are, we have choice, right? That's yeah. it. That's such a beautiful thing. We have choice. And so that's why I love that thing with astrology. I don't tell you how your Scorpio shows up. Yeah. God, no. I don't ever tell Scorpio anything. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I will, you know, I, I will ask, like, I will give you examples on both sides because I think that's the thing. You have a choice. If you want to show up like a scorpion or do you want to show up like the phoenix? Yeah. You have a choice. You know, do you want to rise from the ashes or do you want to just keep stinging people? Your choice. Yep. You know? So yeah, that's a very base way of talking about Scorpio, but it is really just like, you know, like as a Gemini, do you want to show up superficial and do I want to be super fickle and not really talk about anything serious or do I want to realize that there's some depth to me and I want to really share that, which Mm. is it. Yeah. So I love that choice. And you have chosen depth. (laughs) And sometimes just superficial (laughs) after five o'clock mostly. (laughs) Yeah. That's your off time. (laughs) Just love it. We teach what we heal. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful statement. It's so true. There's nothing that I have ever teached. There's nothing Mm -hmm. I've ever taught that I didn't have an embodied. Mm -hmm. Um, If I try to teach something I haven't embodied, it like doesn't go anywhere. Right. That's so true. That's where I feel like I skim the surface because I'm like I just it's not natural language. Which, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, and I think it's part of our dharma. If we're learning something, then we're learning it for ourselves. Then it's, ir- I, you know, I say this, but I don't, it, like, it's irresponsible not to share it. You know, even yeah. if we're just sharing it as a mom or we're sharing it as a friend or a sister or a daughter or whatever it is, it, you know, we can't just keep it to ourselves. Like, we're here to share. With oh, others. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that from a very energetic perspective where something comes to me and I have like a realization or a revelation, I'll sit with it for a few days and then it'll, it'll become a Facebook post of some kind at some point when the timing is right. Mm -hmm. I I notice, I don't, I wonder what sun sign trait this is or what trait or what 
you know, this is related to, but there are sometimes people will have a revelation and they are immediately on Facebook talking about it mm-hmm. or immediately just like broadcasting this truth that they um, have realized without waiting for it to kind of integrate and settle in. Mm-hmm. What sign that is it? That would be more um, fire. Fire. Right. That would be yeah. fire. I did specifically Aries or Sag, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas water, again, like anytime I see a water person, you have to sit with it. You got to feel, feel out, like feel literally feel yeah. out, like, how do I want to say this? What's the most, what's the most depth I can bring to this, mm-hmm. you know, to this um, topic, you mm-hmm. know, and how do I really feel about it? So yeah, it's, it's a different pace. Fire's it fast, is. water is not. It mm-hmm. is air is fast earth is not yeah and it's very important for me to share things in a way that's grounded Mm -hmm. and not just like you know like i picture like um paintball (laughs) you're just shooting a paintball gun and it just splatters like randomly around you know (laughs) um there's nothing wrong with that it's just that's not how i like to share things i wait i like to wait for it to be integrated and like i felt Mm -hmm. through yeah really felt feel through it Mm -hmm. yeah Interesting. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about Taurus energy? Taurus energy, the energy we're in now. So the sun just went into Taurus, I guess also a little over a week ago now. And we just had the planet Mercury, which is the mind, which is how we communicate. It rules our mental body, just went into Taurus. And then we have another planet in there, um, Uranus, which will be in there for seven years. Um, and it is the planet of, well, it's the planet of disruption. It's the planet of change. It's the planet of thinking to the future. It's the planet of humanity. Okay. So there we have our, you know, the sun and Mercury and, and Uranus all in, in uh, they were all together actually last week or sun and Uranus were. So if things were a little disruptive last week, you could just see it on the news, right? It was happening on a collective level. Everybody had it. So people were starting to rebel against the stay at home order, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So it's at its worst, Uranus can create some rebellion. Um, at its best, it's a revolutionary for what's best for humanity. Okay. So it's kind of, it's, it is that, that kind of um, energy. So the cool thing about Taurus is we come out of Aries energy, which was fire. So there's a lot of like, you could feel the tension building. You could feel like, you know, people reacting. You could like what you were talking about, fire energy, Aries energy, they talk before they think. Mm -hmm. So that can get really tricky, right? We saw a lot of that probably in most of April um, and late and late March. Um, so I think the great thing about Taurus is Tauruses are all about stability grounding, sequence. Taurus is about the earth. This is Mm -hmm. what's so fascinating about having the planet of disruption in the (coughs) sign of Taurus for the next seven years Mm. is this disruption to how we treat the earth, you know, and this, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a little painful as we know, but Mm -hmm. it is the right thing. Like, how do we, you know, how do we really go back to supporting what's the right thing? That's what Uranus is always thinking about. Like, not so cur- not so concerned about um, how we get there, but that we get to there, you know, to mm-hmm. treating the earth better. Taurus is also, it's very grounded spirituality. Mm-hmm. So like, like the earth, it's very much about nature. So Taurus people love to be outside. They love to garden. They love tang- They love to get their hands in things. They work with clay. They work with um, essential oils. They work with dirt. They mm-hmm. grow things. Um, so this is a great time to really be doing things that are pleasing the senses. Obviously look at Taurus season. It's when we plant stuff, right? It's when we do get our hands in the dirt. Um, it's time where we can go outside because the weather has shifted and we're ready to be out there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also, so what I would say is it's also a time. So like things, it's generally, it's a slow sign. If you think about my favorite thing is the tortoise and the hare, the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? So when they start off at the starting line, the hare, you know, screams for the finish line, but then takes a nap and doesn't cross the finish line. And the tortoise just plods along and ends up beating him because it just kept putting one foot in front of the other. That's Taurus Mm. energy. Mm. So I think in this month, um, we're in Taurus, you know, the energy is around like through May 20th or so. So like the next two to three weeks with Mercury and all these planets in there, like just really taking like one thing at a time. When Tauruses take on too much at once, 
they get overwhelmed. Yeah. So if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, then it's just like, okay, wait, step back. One thing, A, B, C, D, E. Like as soon mm -hmm. as they do that, it just gets so much simpler. So that's just really the easiest way. And, and so in that realm, hopefully we'll be able to ground in the information. Like, can we go out? Do we stay in? You know, like, let's get some really solid information based on some facts um, and really then take some action from that mm -hmm. at a slow level. Let's open stores back up slowly. Let's open everything back up slowly. You know, so hopefully that with that pace, we'll be able to um, keep things, you know, keep things pretty steady. Another good Taurus word. I like it. Steady. Yeah. It's a very steady. comforting word for me right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which we haven't had that. Comfort. No. We've no, had confusion. We <laughs> Pisces was confusion. Then Aries was like anger and frustration and a lot of energy. And now Taurus, yeah. let's just see what we can ground in and, you know, see what we can do going into the summer. And what's coming next? Yeah, what is what's coming after Taurus? <laughs> Gemini. Gemini. Yeah, so, that's, so that's... Gemini is going to collect a lot of facts. Okay. So hopefully by then we'll see like a lot of facts, not fiction. I mean, Gemini can make shit up, that's true. Mm -hmm. But hopefully we'll see some facts about like, this is working, this is not working. Gemini can also adjust. So we can see how it worked for us to open up at the way we opened up, like say, you know, my town of Steamboat. And if we're like, okay, that didn't work, so let's adjust, you know, and let's make some changes so that, you know, we can make it, um, make it work better. Okay. So, hopefully. so like the end of May-ish is when we move yep. into that. that yep, like May 20th, May 21st. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. But it also is a faster pace. So we'll also start to see a faster pace again. You know, so enjoy this slow time. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, my, I, I tend to have a tourist season and then a whatever. <laughs> what's the fastest season? <laughs> I don't even know. All the, yeah. All the it, fire seasons, you know, yeah. all the fire months. So, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. I, I was, um, I don't know, actually. Last year, I went into this cycle around September mm -hmm. through February. Uh, yeah, through February of, of like very slow. Mm -hmm. like barely anything happening um mm -hmm. business wise but mm -hmm. internally like everything was happening right. all of this stuff was shifting and changing for me and then it's like it all that all all the shifts and changes on the inside relaxed and then when everyone else began to do their inner work mm -hmm. i was doing the opposite thing <laughs> it's like right. out there offering sharing it's been very interesting to be like um I, not opposite, but having a different experience. Right. Uh, right. Well, time. you took care of your inner world at a time when, you know, maybe like it wasn't being, it wasn't happening societally. Right. But you, you didn't have a choice. You were like, I got to figure this out. Right. Like I yeah. got to slow down and stop. Oh no, there was so, yeah. no choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing bad yeah. happened, but it was just like, oh, this is a yeah. time where you'll have 10 clients a week. That's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you, right. you can fill this time with all kinds of, massage and uh ex you know exercise and cranial sacral and get it all in right exactly exactly oh that's so good it is good um yeah. okay so how can people find you if they want to have a personal reading or if they want to um, be a part of the school okay yeah probably the best way to get me is either um instagram or facebook i'm chris rouse astrology Okay. So it's K-R-I-S-R-O-W-S-E, astrology, or my website is chrisrousecoaching.com. So um, any one of those ways, I, I can answer questions, I can do readings, I can, I can give you all kinds of information about the school, which won't open up again until the fall. Nice. But um, yeah, yeah, I, get you, I can point you in the right direction of who to talk to with that. So yeah. Lovely. Okay. Oh, so the fall. So if anybody's watching and wants to do astrology school, you got to wait. Yep. So okay. that's okay. They'll get, they're going to give away a lot of free information to really um, just help you learn some things while you're waiting for school to open up is what they do during this time. So yeah. Oh, so, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So um, through your website, can people get to the astrology school or what, what's Not to the... the school? Actually, if you want to get straight to the school, uh, Deborah Silverman astrology.com. Okay. And you'll get put on a waiting list so that when it does open, it'll be, you'll be ready to go. 
All right, cool. Yeah. I'm sure there's all kinds of resources on there too. People are interested. Totally. Yep. Excellent. Totally. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Oh, really thank fun. you, Jamie. Yeah, it was really fun. So good to see you and I'm so grateful. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Love to you. Mwah. <laughs>